So James Harden, you play with Harden with the Rockets, mm -hmm. play with him with the Sixers. We've seen what's going on, but just talk to me a little bit about what James was like with the Rockets versus how he was able to adjust his game, be more of a facilitator with the Sixers. Um, I mean, you got to look at the Once again, this goes back to what we were just saying. Like, it's, it's different roles call for different things, different spaces call for you to do different things. You feel me? So you look at Houston James Harden, whose team was that? Mm -hmm. James Harden's. Mm -hmm. No if ands bust about it. You feel me? Look at all the pieces that they transferred out. All the they went small ball shooting threes. Like every year they, they it was transferred out and, and trying to build the winning team around who? James. Now you go to Brooklyn. It's not James. You know, now we're trying to build a team that's gonna be best to win around Kyrie Irving, James Harden, and Kevin Durant. It's not the same thing. So now your role don't call for you to do the same, you feel me, what you was doing with Houston, stuff like that. You feel me? Does that make you less of a player? No, it's just what your role is called for. You feel me? Which a lot of, like we said, a lot of people don't understand that. Now you go even step further. Now you say him in Philly. Now, whose team is that? The process. It's a process. You feel me? Like, simple as that, bro. Like, it, like look at how it comes, bro. Like, it, you go, it went from it being a team built around you and, and you feel me, what's going to satisfy, well, not really satisfy you, but what's going to help you to win, you feel me, and put our team on top. Now it's to the point where he's going there and now he's an added piece to helping this team win, you feel me, with also having to, you feel me, still play and be who he is with another superstar. You feel me? Like it's, it's a learning process for everybody. So I'm sure you've seen all the situation going on all offseason, now into this season. I think recently James said that there's no way of repairing this like a marriage, like, you know, if he feels betrayed. He's got to move on. So as a teammate, how do you feel watching this thing, and how do you feel it's gonna play out? Be honest with you, bro. Like that's like they got history, bro. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's, it's a place that they started out together, and like a lot of this stuff that like I, we just spoke on about building the team around James. Like they have history together. You feel me? So as far as what he said, I mean, it's got it's 100% true. Like he said, bro. Like they have history. So what he said isn't just something that just came out of thin air or just like, you know, oh, like it came out of shock or nowhere. Like, nah, these guys have history. Like they won't, they, it's not their first go around. It's not their first time of knowing each other, you feel me, know, doing business with each other. So obviously it's some things that maybe were said that we don't know about, you feel me, that just wasn't stood on, you feel me? And it's like a man, he he's just standing on now his principles of where he feels like he got to come from of it. You feel mm -hmm. me? Can't do nothing but respect it. It was a funny, so I, no one's, no one's going to, no one's going to switch the, the narrative on this, right? So, you know, everyone's always talking about, you know, what you would sacrifice for a ring, right? What you would sacrifice for your teammate, right. right? So when James sacrificed for Maury and the Sixers, he doesn't get credit for it, right? right. And Maury is the one that's moving backwards on what he asked James to do. No one's gonna question Maury's integrity of, of winning for that. If this was any other profession <laughs> in the world, 100%, everyone will understand this what this is, what this situation is. Right. What's happening is, once you throw millions into it, once people hear million, oh, yeah. you know, oh, you still a millionaire. Yeah. Logic just goes out of the window. That's, that's people. Favorite. It's the logic that like no one wants to use logic because of the millions that's being. The deal is I was offered if it's a raise, if someone told you, hey, work overtime, right? Work overtime, work overtime for the next week. Right. And then, you know, I'll make it up, you know, at the end of the year. Right. And he don't make it up. But you did the hours. Right. right? You're not going to be like, oh, yeah, you know, that's, that's OK. No, so, <laughs> it's loyalty, right? It's he was loyal to the Sixers. The Sixers are not loyal to him. The only reason he took this pay cut is because the history. But you want to know what's even crazier with it, bro? Like everything that the media is saying and portraying shit like that, it won't be like that in the locker room, though. Like mm -hmm. he's still going. You feel me? As you saying, he's going to do his work. He's going to still come in. He's going to hoop and shit like that. You feel me? I, he's not going to go out there and like try to jeopardize his team and no shit like that, you feel me? Like, he's still gonna play the game of basketball, you feel me? He's just letting it be known that, you feel me, this relationship is not one of those things that's a repairable, you feel me, type of relationship. So that's what I was gonna ask you. The media kind of project, pro projects this image and portrays this image of Harden, but what is he like as a teammate? Like, we go back to game one against the Celtics, he's out in Vegas turning up, but comes back 45-piece. 
So do you as teammates give a f like, I don't care what you do in your spare time as long as when you get in between these lines, you do what you're supposed to basically, do? Basically, and I've learned that. <laughs> so basically, that. I, I mean, that's real. Lou. Like I said, I've learned that from Lou, bro. Like, people live different lives, bro. We're all grown. This isn't like, this isn't college where, you feel me, like, we're traveling with the team and you got somebody bed check you and shit like, like <laughs> nah, this ain't college, bro. Like, that's what, and that's a, like, a lot of people don't understand that as far as players. They don't understand that coming into the league and they end up getting messed, uh, getting left behind or, you know, basically slower coming on because they, they're they not, you know, equipped with being adults, you feel me? As opposed to, you know, we're in this setting and stuff now, we're moving around, like at the end of the day, you're still an adult, you feel me? So if we get to the city two, three in the morning, you feel me, and you want to go to a strip club, it's all right, that's on him, you feel me? If he can still maintain to come in and do what we <laughs> ask him to do, you feel me? Like that, we, we, nobody got nothing to be said about that, you feel me? Like, cause at the end of the day, you're still grown, we're still grown men. Like, what they do is what they do. At the end of the day, as long as you're doing what needs to be done in between these four lines, why, why does it really matter? You feel me? Like just as long as you ain't doing no crazy jeopardizing, nothing's going. You feel me? Like say hurt the team or like hurt yourself. Live your life, bro. Everybody got you know different coping mechanisms and things that they do. You feel me? And people that they be around that that's what they need to stay sane. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I remember, like, I don't know if my team would have handled the bubble. <laughs>